I want to start by saying Bracha the Yahweh, Bracha the Yahweh Shai, Bracha the Yahweh, Bracha the Yahweh Shai. Call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Call Halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakah Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine and truth and sincerity. Shalom on to elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, which means He is or He exists. By Hashem in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorant calls Jesus Christ. We know His name to be Yahweh Shai which means he is the deliverer, he is the savior. For the Hebrew Israelites, from the pedigree of your father, Ba'ashim in the name of the Ruach HaKadash, which means the Holy Spirit, the living waters that flow through the hopeful elect to be able to give them the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of who we are, which are the Hebrew Israelites. If you're so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or of the speckled bird looking like the other nations, and your spirit bear witness with this doctrine, you could be one elect. Shalom. Yahweh by Hashem Yahashai by Hashem Kakadash. That's in the ancient Hebrew. We've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off not following the law, such commandments that was given to us by our forefathers, following after false idols and false gods. But in the latter days, through Yahashai Hamashiach, being that perfect lamb, that perfect sacrifice, we're able to get this word, which is able to have, you know, give breath to these uh, dry bones, these dead bones that were at a lowest state. And we're able to have a comforter, an intercessor to be able to give us knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures to be able to comfort us in these times. And also to be able to prophesy against Mount Seir. Mount Seir is also, um, you know, is wherever Esau Edom is, right? And Esau means wasted away he is, and they are the biblical Edomites. They are the self-proclaimed white man, right? The Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the Kennedys, the Soros, the Gates. These are the wicked that in the latter days would have the fatness of the earth, would control it with their sword and use deception and manipulation through their television, you know, their media and median. Media goes back to median, which goes back to the witchcraft and sorcery to tell lies to your vision. And also to use their legislation, which is their propaganda, to manipulate the masses of people through their, their governments, their democracies, creating uh, tyrants and creating division in everywhere they go. That's why you have in over 80 countries, 750 military bases that they have on record. But of course, you know, they have more. Esau Edom is a, a strange from the womb telling lies. And what do they do in each one of these places? They create division, putting the woman above the man. You know, putting their 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 um their white God, their white uh, uh Jesus, um, you know, creating narratives, calling people extremists if they believe in a certain thing, and that's what the times we're in right now. And those that believe in Yahweh Hashem Shai are going to be persecuted for this truth. But this word is able to give you uh you know comfort. You know, and that's what I want to get into today was uh, Hebrews four and twelve. For the word of Yahweh is quick, okay? So just to go into that real quick, there's a, there's a, this is a very um, Yapa scripture, which Yapa goes back to beautiful, you know, because it breaks down what this word actually does, right? So I want to go into a couple of definitions real quick. Quick. <clears throat> yeah, so Greek 21 and 98, to live, to breathe among, among the living, not lifeless, not dead. So that goes into Ezekiel uh, 37 and 5, you know, prophesied to these bones and they shall live. And then Ezekiel 37 and 10, where it's speaking about prophesied to these bones and they shall stand on their feet like a great army. Okay. And so with that great army, they're able to have the breath. And what are they speaking about? How about Shemar Shah? He's able to touch thy mouth. Jeremiah 1 and 5, where it's able to touch thy mouth and give you the words to be able to speak. Right. And that, that is true life to have true life and worthy of thy name. Yeah. Worthy of the name of Yahweh Shema Shai, showing that we have the true name. OK. Living water, having vital power in itself and exerting, exerting the same up, upon the soul to be fresh, strong, efficient. So that's what this word does. Right. And real quick, because it was speaking about water. And that's what this water this water is is able to give you give you life. You know, water is a um, a cleansing agent, 
and it's also has you know vitamins in it. It's able to give you you know breath. Plus, we're made of water, right? You know, I mean, you know, we're not made of water, but a lot of our like, probably like eighty percent of our body is water, right? And that's how we're able to, with through this word, we're able to uh, maneuver through any anything that goes on. John seven and thirty eight. He that believeth in me, as the scripture, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Again, and that's what this word does, or that's what this uh, when it quickens. Okay. So going back to it, Hebrews four and twelve. For the word. Because the word is Yaharashai HaMashiach. So he's able to uh, get through anything. Why? Because Matthew 28 and 18, he has been given all power for his uh, sacrifice. That's how we're able to even get this word. want to get a couple more um, definitions. So that was, that was the word quick. I want to go into that, you know, the, the word, right? So Greek 30 and 56 it says, a word uttered by a living voice embodies a conception of idea. And what is our idea? The kingdom. Okay. The sayings of Yahweh. Yeah, because Yahweh Shai is, uh, Yahweh gave the decree to Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai gives it to the angels or gives it to the elders and apostles to be able to give it to the fruits and on down. A decree, a decree, a mandate or order. So the same thing that Esau Edom is trying to do on the left hand side. He's trying to give the law, you know, through his um, Isaiah 10 and 1, his unrighteous decrees. And then he's trying to uh, mandate you. OK, and then when you don't mandate, when you don't you know, comply, guess what? It's going to be draconian. That's the same thing was going on on the right hand side. There's a decree going out. And how um, about Shema is giving pastors of his own heart. Right. That will give you the knowledge and understanding of the scriptures. And then he's, he's mandating you and now he's ordering you. OK, there's 613 laws, but there's there's also decrees as far as in the scriptures to be able to follow. OK, and those that don't bear those things that don't rehearse the righteous acts are going to get thrust through. They're going to get destroyed. OK. What is declared a thought, a declaration, discord, the act of speaking speech. OK, doctrine, teaching. A continuous speaking discourse, instruction, anything reported in matter under discussion that's spoken affair. Yeah, the reason, the mental uh, facility of thinking, meditating, reasoning, and are we meditating about the, about, um, you know, the kingdom? You know, meditating about you know, doing lessons, meditating about Yahweh Shemir Rashai, you know, and how 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 beautiful this is to be able to even be worthy, even be called, and, and maybe uh, be eligible to be elect, to be one of the elect, and that's all through this word. I want to get one more thing out of here. One more, uh, you know, word definition. A discerner. So when you go into the root word of that. Yeah, so. Greek 29 and 23. And it reads. This is or this is a definition of the leaders or rulers of the Israelites. And who are the Israelites? Sons of the power. Okay, that were given the promise. A man of what? Yahabah Shemar Shai's apple of his eye. Okay, the one that uh, Deuteronomy four and six, the one that has uh, what, what, uh, what um, nation is so nigh to Yahweh Shai? Those are the Israelites. It speaks about in Psalms one forty eight, and I'll, and I'll get that later. Yeah, who one who passes or arrogates to himself judgment or anything? Yeah, so arbitrator. So who is that? That's uh, Yahweh Shai, because again, Matthew twenty eight and eighteen, he's been given all reigns. Through his sacrifice. So now going into it, Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of Yahweh is quick. Yes, yeah, giving you life and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. So 
this word can, uh, you know, put you on the left hand side of uh, being a mocker, a scoffer, um, uh, uh, you know, um, a heralding, okay, a reprobate, or it can put you on the right hand side of being a loyal servant to Yahweh Shemar Hashem, meek and lowly, you know, doing the work, um, you know, helping thy brother, uh, you know, uh, feeding the sheep. Okay, those are all on the right hand side, but it can cut you on left and the right. It shows you that there's a balance. But Yahweh Shemar Hashem is what? Piercing, even dividing asunder of a soul and a spirit and of the joints and the marrow. And is a discerner, right? And we, who's that discerner? The ruler of the Israelites, which is what? Who? Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's right. So he knows, again, a man's Proverbs 20 and 24, a man's goings are of the Lord. How could he know his ways? So he already knows who's predestined. He knows what you can be able to go through and what you can't go through. And he's going to be able to uh, test you in different ways because we know that uh, 1 Peter 1 and 7, that this is a trial of our faith. Right? And this thing is what? Precious. It's precious. That means to value this word with truth and sincerity because not everybody's going to get it. Your cousin might not get it. Your brother might not get it. Your next door neighbor, someone you grew up with in school, they might not get it, but you do. That's why you have to approach this Philippians 2 and 12 with fear and trembling. So those that mock and they scoff, they're going to get judged. Lord willing that you endure to the end, that we endure to the end. You know what I mean? To be able to, um, you know, some of us shall not taste death or some of us got to be mourners. But either way, the kingdom is coming in through the uh, spirit and testimony of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, which is the spirit of prophecy, which means the forecast and say before. And right now we're forecasting what? The, the kingdom of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. And Lord willing, we're those joint heirs. Lord willing, we're of the elect, the remnant, because only the elect and the remnant are going to be able to get this word. Okay, the re the two thirds are going to, going to um, have to be destroyed on this side through that second lake of fire, through intercontinental ballistic missiles, which is the third woe, and famine and pestilence. Right, that's what we, um, you know, the prophets of old have prophesied of. And now the prophets of today are doing the same thing, coming back in their lot, right? So I want to get a couple of scriptures. You know, just to back up that point. Because we know that the two-thirds, according to Ecclesiastes 4 and 1, two-thirds are not going to have a comforter in that time. Okay? And a, a sign of being a two-third is you you keep, you're in, let me just let the scripture speak for it. Ephesians 4 and 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and a cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Yeah, so, you know, that's uh, Esau Edom's craftiness as far as his Christianity, his Catholicism, you know, his chemitology. Okay, then you have, um, you know, these evil, wicked uh, people that know they're of Israel that uh, call on the name of Yahweh Shemir Hashai, but then they, what, change the doctrine. They say Yahweh Hashai didn't do miracles. Um, Esau can make it. Um, John wasn't in the truth. Uh, Mark, Mark doesn't know what he's talking about. Speaking about St. Mark. Okay, so all these different things. These are red flags. And so that's why it's to let you know to not watch all these different camps. You know, stick with, uh, what is that, First Corinthians uh, 1 and 10, people that are like-minded, that are speaking the same thing, and also Philippians 2 and 2. Right? Let me just get that scripture real quick. All right, yeah, I'll get it right here. Let's see, 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. It's either 1 and 10 or 2 and 10. Yeah, come on. So 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, that you all speak the same thing and that you be not divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. That's right. You know, that's what we have to be. That's why, you know, you have, uh, you know, GMS with the elders and apostles. You know, the, the apostles and the elders on down, okay? But then you have groups like Men of Valor. You know, have, um, you know the, the camp that I'm in, Watchmen of the Coast, over here in, uh, you know, San Diego. 
and you have I'm on by you know uh, Maccabees one four four you know the brother Yawaka up there in um you know uh, Sacramento, okay so you have brothers and, and other brothers that are like minded that are preaching in the same name, that are like minded doctrine talking about the karagma, okay which is a graven image in your forehead and your hand, okay they're not mocking and scoffing they're they're that's not a, a stumbling block to them. Let me get a couple scriptures for that. Philippians 2 and 2, fulfill ye my joy that you might be like-minded, having the same love, being on one accord of one mind. So one accord and one mind is, is the breakdowns. Revelation 13 and 16, that breakdown. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a hot topic right now. You know why? Because Apostle Tahar coined this year, what? The year of Yahabah Shema Shai turning up. Okay, and we already see what, uh, um, you know, Musk is doing. He already put it in a pig. He put it in a, a, a monkey, okay, or a chimpanzee. And now what are they doing? They want to put it in humans this year, okay? So that's a major prophecy. And so all these things that, that the elders and apostles have been speaking about for years, okay, are manifesting. They're being seen. This this was all prophecy. And now we're speaking the same like-minded um, one accord doctrine because it says it, John uh, 21 and 17, if you love me, feed my sheep. And that was Yahweh Shai speaking. Okay. But we know that this word is going to be a stumbling block. Again, <laughs> the left and the right, showing that Yahweh is in control, a uh, perfect uh, balance, one to honor and one to dishonor. Isaiah 8 and 14, and he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both houses of Israel, for a gin, right, a trap, and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Okay? So he will keep you safe, but to Israel and Judah, Judah, Sakia, he will be a stone that makes people stumble, a rock that makes them fall. And for the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. So we know that it says in Matthew that he, when he comes, um, he's coming to what? Coming with that sword. And he's coming to what? Bring a variance, which means a difference. Um, and Yahweh was always meant to do that, to create that difference, to, to one to honor and one to dishonor. And Lord willing, we endure to the end to be able to honor, to be able to, um, you know, be lifted up in those chariots. You know, to be able to, um, you know, escape death or to be able to be a mortar or to be able to um, have that comfort. Lord willing, we endure to the end for thy namesake. So just a little bit more on that word. John 6. Yeah, so I'll start from, uh, let's see, John 6 and 47. Verily, verily, so truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth in me have everlasting life. So if you believe in Yahweh Shema Shai, there's an everlasting kingdom, right? And you want to be of the elect and the remnant. You don't want to come back in the bowels, um, you know, of another man. You want to come into your same mindset, okay? And because of that reward, you will have what? Um, you know, many mansions. You will have, um, you know, dominion, rulership, all these different things. And ultimately you will have the law set your commandments in your, um, you know, your inward part. So you don't have to worry about anything. You'll know. Okay. Cause you stood stiffly for that word. You will have that crown upon your head as to speak about second Ezra about, uh, what is that? 47. Yeah. Second Ezra, I think it's two and 47, right? It says, I am the bread of life. Okay, so let's just go into that word bread of life. And that's speaking about Yahweh Shai. Bread. The Israelites made it in the form. Okay.
Yeah, so cunt, bread. To take from among the living, either by natural death or by violence. Okay? So, either way, Yahabba Shema Shah, this bread of life is going to be able to take us. Right? So, going back, it says John 6 and 8, I am that bread of life. Right? And that's Yahabba Shai Hamashiach speaking in red letter. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Okay, yeah, so our people, um, they're speaking, that's speaking about the physical bread, you know, the bread that you eat, okay, and this is speaking about the spiritual bread, the bread of life. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Yeah, so that's, again, that's spiritual bread because, you know, in this parable, it's speaking about, you know, they thought he was being a cannibal, okay, but he was actually speaking about spiritually. That's why, um, you know, it speaks about in Corinthians that that uh, the natural man won't understand, but the spiritually discerned man will be able to understand these uh, dark sayings. OK, it says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Yeah. And so when the, the world is not speaking about for everybody, let's just go into it real quick. Yeah, which is the same thing that's in John 3, 16. The inhabitants of the earth, let's see, the ungodly multitude, the whole mass of the men alienated from Yahweh, therefore hostile to Hamashiach, world affairs, abrogate, let's see. Yeah, so right here, when you go into the, the Greek 28 and 65, to in the root word, to receive what was previously one's own, to get back, to receive back, to recover. So again, that goes into Romans 9 and 4, where it's speaking about the adoption of the Israelites. Okay? Showing that we're coming back, we're coming back in that residue, those that believed before. We're coming back to cake right here, right here. Sakia, to take, let me get some water real quick. To take up or carry away in order to care for and preserve. And doesn't it say, preserve me from that violent man? And there's also plenty of scripture where, see, where it says, um, I will preserve thee. Yeah, the to receive, obtain the promised blessing. Okay. That just shows, and, and Esau is not blessed. He has no, uh, Hebrews 12 and 16, he has no place of repentance because one, one morsel of meat he has sold, okay? That's why he's a vagabond, which means running to and fro, fugitive, running from the um, the the, uh, the murder of the killing of his brother Abel, okay? And Esau is coming in that same spirit. He was created to dishonor. That's in that same chapter, Romans and Romans 9. Right. So let's go back to it. Got one more scripture on the on the word. Let's see, slack you. <clears throat> Romans one and sixteen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Amashiach, for it is the power of Yahweh and to salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And that's not um, speaking about the, Jew, the 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 small hats, okay? And it's not speaking about the Greek. It's speaking about those in the Hellenized uh, state of mind that were just like we were in captivity over here in Babylon the Great, okay? Um, you know, we were basically, you know, the people call us Americans, but we're actually Hebrew Israelites, okay? We're in the, we were in that captivity. You know, you have the, you know, the uh, Korean captivity, Ephesians, so you would be, uh, you know, of that same thing. And that's a, gonna, that's a stumbling block for a lot of people because they believe that. They, so to the Jew, and we'll just get that definition, belonging. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, respects to birth, origin, because we are known as the true Jews. Okay.
Yeah, I don't. Sometimes these things go off, so don't even. Just looking through it. So yeah, so it says you know the it should be the Jew respects the birth origin and you know that's who was given the promise the Israelites okay which were known as the the first were known as the, the Jews but what did the 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 small hats do they took a uh, they they took our heritage okay and then uh, you know to the Greek this was the one I want to actually get uh, Helen which goes back to the Greek 1672 a Greek either by nationality or whether native of the mainland or Greek islands colonies in a wider sense the name embraces all nations that are not Jews that made the language customs and learning from the Greeks at their own primary reference yes yeah, so the people that were in that captivity they started to uh, you know uh, come forth with their uh, customs right So again, Romans 1 and 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Hamashiach, for it is the power of Yahweh into the salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Yes, yeah, so this is not for everybody. It says that in what Isaiah 40, these uh, other nations are but a but a spittle. It speaks about Esau Edom, Hebrews 12, where he has no place of repentance. So it's not for these other heathen nations. This word is for the Hebrew Israelites, and right now it's for the elect. So let me just get rid of some of these real quick. Let's go. It's another back that up. This is Acts 5 and 33. And when they heard that they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Okay, so when this word, again, going back to that two-edged sword, they were cut. And that's, that's going back to these were the... Um, I think the wicked Pharisees that told them not to speak, not to call on the name of Yahabah Shemir Ashai. What does it say? Yeah, Ananos and, and Sapphire. Okay. So they were telling them not to uh, preach in the name, but this, but but this word is cutting them. That's why when 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 people come up, mockers and scoffers. You know, we can't we can't go into our own feelings. You know, we have to stick. We have to stay in the scriptures. You know what I mean? And we and we can cut them with just the milk. We don't even need to get to the meat. We can cut them with simple scriptures. And that's why we always got to stick to the scriptures, because that is that secret place. OK, that it speaks about in Psalms 91 and uh, one it speaks about uh, Psalms uh, 25 and 14. OK, because this word and see, when they heard that they were cut to the heart, right? Because this cuts your lahab, it cuts your whole belly and took counsel to slay them. Yeah, they wanted to kill them because of this word was so piercing. Again, like that two-edged sword. Okay. That's what, the, <laughs> you know, and when you're on the highways and the byways and, 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 and you bringing out, you know, how about Shema Shah bringing out scriptures and you hit someone, you know, you, you feel that. You feel that you're like whoa, and, and they 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 feel it. You know what I mean? And they walk off, and they don't know what to do. They're woozy. Okay, Psalms thirty-seven and fourteen. Yeah, thirty-seven and fourteen. The wicked have drawn out their sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. So that's what Esau Edom is doing right now. That's why he's saying certain things are misinformation. That's why he put the DHS uh, bulletin board out. Um, you know, far as we're going to um, try to monetize and what we need to go through the government to be able to make these laws right. You see um, the YouTube um, CEO, she she's looking bugged out, you know, looking like Arthur. OK, so they're, they're trying to slander, slander us for what the upright conversation. Right. Let's see if it has anything for upright conversation. As far as the definition. Because this world is upside down, they're not upright. You know, they're down in the ground. They're at a low estate. Straight up, correct, straight level, right, pleasing, right. Who's the right hand? Yahweh Hebrews 34 and 74, to be right, to be straight, to level up, to be lawful. And we know that um, uh, Esau Edom is not lawful. Okay, he can't be, Right. To be straightforward, and we know, yeah, we know Esau Edom is not straightforward. Again, he's just straying from the womb, telling lies. 
He's a forger of lies and a physician of no value. Never trust thine enemy. If he doeth good, he doeth unwillingly. And that's just a couple of scriptures, right? To make right, to make smooth, to make, he doesn't know how to do, to lead, to direct. Okay, he doesn't do nothing smoothly. Again, he's cardinal. And that's the upright conversation makes you to be able to walk down that straight path, which is a position of difficulty, but you're able to have, um, you know, comfort. You're not able, I'm not looking over my back because I know I'm doing the right things, right? It is a pleasing thing. It is a delight to Yahabah Hashem and Hashai to, to do this work. To follow his law, set your commandments. I'm going to get that, Lord willing. Because what are they, what is uh, Esau Edom doing? He's slandering thy word. But he's come, but he'll come with the Bible and he'll come with, you know, I want to save the kids and he'll come with all these different um, you know, false philosophies, but none of them are um, you know, true. So Psalms 50 and 16, but unto the wicked our power, Yahweh said, What hast thou done to declare thy statutes, or that thou should take my covenant in thy mouth? Yeah, so they they put in um, you know, for instance, Joe Butthead. What did he do? He swore on the biggest Bible in the world, right? But then what did he do? He passed legislations to have transformers, have, um, I think her name is Levine. Uh, she's the health minister. Okay, then you have another guy that's, that's, a, that's um, you know, into being bestiality, and he's like running the missiles or something like that. Okay, this is it. And, and, and the um, elder Yashawamba, he had said... He had said things were going to start getting, uh, you know, fruity up in there. <laughs> you know, they're going to start acting real uh, 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 fruity pebble-ish, okay? And and we see it now manifesting to show you that the these, um, you know, um, that this word is on point. So Psalms 50 and 17. Psalms 50 and 17. Seeing thou hatest instruction and cast my words behind thee. Yeah, so you refuse to have discipline. And you treat my words like what? Like trash. You you say one thing, you swear on the Bible, you go to the, the, the Catholic Church, which is an abomination, because what does the Catholic Church have? Uh, they worship uh, Dagon, Dagon, okay, which is the fish god. Well, that's why they wear that ridiculous hat. And all the, there's all, the, all types of other symbolism going back to Rome, showing that this is Rome 2.0. This is Babylon the Great that it speaks about in the scriptures, which is that whore that sits upon the beast. For what? All the abominations. That's why this place is going to get destroyed. For all the abominations, the man on man, the woman on woman, the transformers, the woman over the man, okay, the, the taxation, the usury, okay, the um, the use, the slander of thy brother, Psalms 50 and 18. When thou sawest a thief, then thou contendest with him and has been a partaker with the with the adulterers, right? Yeah, so all the people that are going off, you know, the stealing of the lands. You know, uh, rape, robber, murder. You know, Gad was over here. Ephraim was over here. Issachar was over here. What do they do? They stole the land, you know, uh, coming up with uh, false covenants. Uh, not false covenants, but false, um, you know, pretenses as far as, yeah, covenants. Yeah, they had covenants. You know, yeah, the um, Trail of Tears, you know, was one of them. Okay? Because that, that speaks about that in Psalms 55 and 20. Make no covenant with thy heathen. Because he's always going to go back on his word. He, he, uh, Psalms 12 and 2, where he speaks with a double tongue, right? Because his inward thought is to have uh, swords drawn, right? Psalms 50 and 19, thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit. Yeah, so they're full of lies, you know, saying that, um, you know, we, we evolve, uh, Darwinism, we, we evolve from monkeys, okay? Um, you know, saying that we're all uh, killers, you know, we're all, um, you know, just drug dealers. If you look at uh, Joe, Bo Joe Butthead's 1993 speech, speaking about the Israelites, then what did he want to do in, uh, what is that, last year? Or was it two years ago? When he was uh, when, um, elect, he said he's all about, you know, you're not black if you don't vote for me. Again, black is what? Void of light, absence of light. And, and with this word, you're able to have light in a dark place. Job 10 and 21, Matthew 23 and 4. We're in the valley of shadow of death. Okay, this is not that when you wake up in the morning, you might say, you know, I'm in California and you, oh, it's a sunny day. But really, there's chemtrails in the air. There's false philosophy all around. People driving, driving uh, crazy because they're all, they're beetle juiced up. Okay, you have, uh, 
you know, chemtrails in the again, chemtrails in the air, fluoride in the water. You know, you go brush your teeth, fluoride in your toothpaste. You go eat some food, GMO foods, and you don't know what it is. Again, it tells you never trust thine enemy. Full of lies, full of deceit. This is the point. Psalms 50 and 20. Thou sittest and thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, thou slanderest thy own mother's son. Yeah, and so, and um, you know, Esau is our brother, right? But again, there's two. There was two wombs in the nation: one to honor and one to dishonor. Okay, there was one that was given the promise, which are the uh, the Israelites, and one to to be destroyed, with that wrath uh, fitted for destruction. So going back to Hebrews. I'll just get it right here. Hebrews 4 and 13. Hebrews 4 and 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest that is made seen in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So nothing in all creation is hidden from Yahweh. Everything is naked and exposed. Right? Before his eyes and he is the one whom we are accountable. Yeah, so when you go to, you know, the spiritual world, who's there? Yahweh Shai. Because again, he's been given all reign. Because of his uh, sacrifice. Right? And again, uh, Yahweh Shemar Shai's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Isaiah 45 and 7. He forms the light. He creates darkness. He's the one that heals. Right? Roughly paraphrasing. He's the one that kills. Deuteronomy 32 and uh, 39. 1 Samuel 2 and 6, right? So all these judgments, Esau, Edom is going to have to be accountable for because uh, Yahabba Shema Shai sees all. I think that's, was that Proverbs 15 and 3? His eyes are in every place. Let's just get it real. Let's see if we got it. I think it's 15 and 3. Yeah, Proverbs 15 and 3. The eyes of Adam and Yahweh are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Yep. So he knows all things that are going on. He's the one that created that. Okay. Again, why is the that's that's why it says why is the um the ashes proud? Why is Esau proud? Because again, Esau is right now is being made bare. Okay, the wisdom is being taken out of Teman. Right. It says Hebrews four and thirteen, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Yahushai. The son of our power, Yahweh, let us hold fast in our profession. Yeah, so let's believe. You know, that that is our, um, you know, I brought it out in John 7 and 38. He that believe in me shall flow rivers of living water. Okay, and also with that belief comes your faith. Hebrews 11 and 6. I want to get two scriptures. Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, right? And that's what Yahweh means. He is or he exists. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And who's going to give you that reward? Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because again, let me let me just get that. So I keep uh, quoting it. He's been given all reigns. This is Matthew 28 and 18. And Yahweh Shai came and spoke unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Okay, so that's just showing you that he's been given all power. That's Yahweh Shai HaMashiach speaking. Galatians 4 and 4. But what then fullness of time was come, Yahweh sent forth his son. And who's that son? Yahweh Shai. Made of a woman, made under the law. Yeah, so coming in the, um, you know, coming in the flesh, which is showing that he was uh, coming coming through the womb, that Yahweh sent his uh, son. Okay, which Joseph, you know, went into um, a Mary, right? And Joseph going into Mary, that was able to bring about uh, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, as spoken about in Matthew's 1. Right. 
showing that he's a, that perfect lamb. He didn't, uh, he didn't, there's not an immaculate conception. Okay. Knocking down that narrative, right? That false doctrine, Galatians four and five to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of the sons. Yes. Yeah, so when you go in, let's just see it. Okay. Cause who's the adoption given to? I think we read it on another scripture. Let's see what it says right here. Yeah, so adoption, this is in the Greek, 5206. It says adoption as sons, the relationship with Yahweh was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites. Preference to, okay? So established between himself and the, the, sorry, the Israelites. <laughs> That's right. Princes of the power. The natural and condition of true disciples of Mashiach, who by receiving the spirit of Yahweh unto their souls, become sons of Yahweh. And didn't he give us life? Didn't he give us breath to be able to be those sons, to be able to come back for the inheritance, the adoption, the blessed that state look for in the future life after visible return? Yeah, so there is life because, again, uh, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the, the beginning thereof after. Because this place is not all going to be destroyed. Just Babylon the Great and other parts are going to be destroyed. But then uh, Esau Edom is going to uh, build this place back up since he's the he says he says he's a mason, right? He believes that he's a mason. He, you know he's going to build it back up, right? Just like we built up his kingdom. It is a righteous thing to what recompense, which means to repay your enemies. So going back to it. It says to redeem that that we're under the law, that we might receive the adoption of the sons. Okay, and because you are the sons of Yahweh, that has sent forth the spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, "Abba, Father!" Yet yeah, Abba Yahweh, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if son, therein heir of Yahweh through Hamashiach. Okay, and that's why your spirit has to bear spirit with this with this spirit, because he's raising up royal priesthood. Right, it's like you're raising up a royal priesthood, and Lord willing, we're uh, those those joint heirs. And then we just get one more scripture to back that up, because it speaks about it in Romans nine and four. Romans nine and four, who are the Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises. Let's just get it what it says right here. Where it says adoption. Yeah, who are the Israelites? The Israelite, one of the nation of Israel, named to be held in honor. Okay, Zion shall be a prince of Yahweh, the name given to Jacob. Okay. Not Esau, the family of descendants, Israel. Okay. Yeah, it says, uh, it says Christians, which we are the true Christians because we're followers of Amashiach. But, but Esau has made that, uh, you know, what the church is wicked. The Israel of Yahweh, for not all those who draw their bodily descent from Israel are true Israelites. Are those whom Yahweh pronounces to be Israelites has chosen to the salvation. So again, his heritage is of the speckled bird. And that you don't have to be a descendant of necessarily of, of Israel. Because again, it is a people before it is a place. Because Jacob, his name was, was, was uh, Jacob. Okay, and then his name was later turned to Israel. Again, that's why it says a people for it was a place. Held in honor. Okay, so when you <laughs> when you go into the same scripture, and I'm going to skip around. Yeah, it has written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Showing that, that their um, Yahabah Shemar Shai hates. And he hates Esau, okay? And just to show you when it says one to honor. Yeah, right here, Romans 9 and 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Okay? What if Yahweh willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endure with much long suffering, right? Which goes back to your patience. Long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, and that's Esau Edom. Again, he hated Esau, okay, but he loved Jacob. And going back to that honor, that adoption. 
And just to back that up real quick, Hebrews 12 and 16. This should show you Esau can't make it. Hebrews 12 and 16, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know that you after afterward, when you would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Who's, who's rejected? Esau Edom. He was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he saw it carefully with tears. So every time he uh, sends off a missile, that's what he's doing. Every time he slanders that brother, he's crying out with tears. Because what did he do? He cried out to Isaac, which was your if you could receive it. He cried out to him, and uh, Isaac gave him uh, the blessing of what the sword and the fatness of the earth, right? But what has he done? He's defiled this place and polluted it to the to the ground. He's done his job. He's he's done that 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 vessel to to wrath and destruction. Okay, but showing you the two powers of your showing you the left and the right. Okay. Showing you that he has all power and all reign. Going back to Genesis 1 and 1, where Yahweh gave the decree to Yahweh Shai to be able to create the world, okay, the create the lands and the, and the oceans and the waters, right? And then and then Yahweh Shai gave the decree to um, the Alahayim, which are the angels, okay? So going back to it, this is Hebrews, let's lock it. Yeah, Hebrews, yeah, we're right. Hebrews 4. And 16, Hebrews 4 and 16, let us therefore come bodily unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. So let us come bodily to the throne of our gracious Yahweh, there where we receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. So we're going to need it through when? Uh, Jacob's trouble, J uh, Jeremiah 30 and 7. Okay, the hour of temptation and revelation. When when they're going to kind of try to come down and give you that karagma. Okay. And so this word, that's why this word is so powerful. Right, because again, when you go into the adoption and the promises that he's given us, right? He said what? He's going to give us a comforter too. What is that, John? Let me just, I'll just type it in regular. I think it's John 15. Yeah, right here. John 14 and 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, with whom the Father Yahweh will send in my name, he will teach you all the things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. Okay, but when the com John 15 and 26, but when the comforter is come, when I will send him the father, Yahweh, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the father, he shall testify of me. Okay, and that's what's happening right now. The comforter is, is in play. The intercessor is here, but two thirds of our people, they're not going to know it again. That, that's showing you that balance of that cutting of the word. Ecclesiastes 4 and 1. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun, and behold, the tears of such were oppressed, and they had no comforter. And on the side, their oppressors, there was power, but they had no comforter. Yeah, because they're not going to know Yahweh Bashem Rashi, because again, they denied him back then. They didn't repent. They didn't be converted. They weren't predestined. Lord willing, we're able to endure to the end, okay, to be able to get this promise. Because we know that Yahweh Bashem Rashi is not a man that will lie. Yahweh is not a man that will lie, right? Malachi 3 and 6, For I am Adam Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Yeah, so you're not going to be destroyed. You're going to be able to what, endure the end. Again, some of us shall not taste death, right? But we have to what? Kiss thy son unless he be mad, right? Let's get that. Psalms 2 and 12. Psalms 2 and 12, kiss thy son unless he be angry and you shall perish from the way when his wrath is kindled. And, and uh, the kiss is a sign of what? Respect of the royal son. You're respecting his decrees and his righteous decrees and whatever that, that you need help with, you're repenting for. Or whatever that you went off with, you repent. And whatever that you need, you ask. And as long as you ask in the name of Yahweh Shem Shai, kiss thy son unless he be angry and you shall perish from the way when his wrath is kindled. But a little bless are all they that put their trust in him. Yeah, so put your trust in Yahweh Hashem Rashad. Again, that's Proverbs 3 and 5. 
Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord, Adawan Yahweh, with all thine heart, and lean not on thy own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear Adawan Yahweh, and depart from evil. Yeah, depart away from this evil oppressor, uh, depart away from you know people in this world, right? Uh, love not the world or the things in it. Be renewed in your mind, what? Transformed. Because there's a promise out there. There's a, you know, <laughs> it's, it's nearer than, uh, what is that? Romans 13 and 11. Romans 13 and 11. And that knowing the time that is now at high time to wake up out of sleep. Yeah, wake up out of what? Darkness. Okay, confusion. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. Yeah, it's nearer than we believe because what we're measuring the time diligently, diligently through the prophecy. Second Ezra 9 and 1. And this promise was given to the Israelites, the elect, the remnant. Psalms 148 and, and about 6, I think. Psalms 148 and 6. He had also established them forever and ever. He had made a decree, right, with a law, which shall not pass. Yes, yeah, so Malachi 3 and 6, it will not pass. Praise Adawan Yahweh from the earth, ye dragons and all you deeps. Yeah, all, <laughs> Fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy and wind, fulfilling his word. Yeah, so all the things that have to happen. Mountains and all his hills, yeah, his governments and all, all these things. Fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl. Kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens and old men and children. Let them praise the name of Adawan Yahweh, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven he also exalted the horn right the horn goes back to power of his people the praise of all his saints even of the children of israel a people near unto them praise ye the lord adawan yahweh so who are the saints the israelites okay that's who this promise was given to those were given to the law of statute commandments let's just see what it says for saints yeah, so Hebrews 26 and 23, faithful, kind, godly, holy, one saint. Okay, that's not Esau Edom. He's not he's not uh, godly. He's ungodly. He's unholy. He's profane. He's outside the temple. I read that in Hebrews 12 and 16. Right? So that's how you know who the saints are and who is Israel. Yasha'Allah. Right? Yahweh prevails. Second name of Jacob given to him and Yahweh after wrestling with the angel. Okay, and then he had 12 sons. Starting from the head tribe of Judah all the way down to the um the tribe of Issachar. Okay, the southern and northern tribes. So-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native Americans. Right? And this is just to show you when we when we uh, trust in Yahweh Shema Shai, when we have faith in Him, this is what Yah this is what He's gonna do. This is what uh, Yahweh Shai or Yahweh is gonna do. It says John twelve, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking. Father, glorify Thy name. What's that name? Yahweh Shema Shai. Let's see what it says for the name real quick. Because in Revelation it says the name goes back to uh, His rank, name. The name is used for everything. Let's see. Okay, so it doesn't really say anything too much about uh, about that part, right? But what's uh, that word glorify? To think, suppose, to opinion, to praise, magnify, celebrate. And isn't his name going to be magnified in that day? Yahabah Shemir Hashai's? Right? And then we read that, um, shall his name be magnified? For I was speaking about the honor and dishonor. Malak Slaki, uh, Romans uh, 9 and um, about 16. To make renewed, to cause dignity, worth of something, person or thing, to become, to manifest, which means to be seen, to acknowledge. Okay, and that goes perfectly with the scripture. Glorify the name, which is Yahweh Shemar Hashai. And I'll end it right here. John 12 and 28. 
Father, this is Yahweh Shai speaking, Father, Yahweh, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. Okay, let's read this in NLT, John 12 and 28. Father, bring glory, Yahweh, Abba, bring glory to the name. Then a voice spoke from him in heaven saying, I have already brought glory to my name and I will do so again. So what did he do in uh, Egypt? He brought glory to his name and he's going to what? Do it again. And what did he say in Malachi 3 and 6? He's not a, a man that will change, right? And that will lie. As it says in uh, Numbers 23 and, uh, you know, 19. And again, in uh, Isaiah, where his words don't go out void. So let's read that again. John 12 and 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. And that's the decree. That's the word. That's that cutting asunder. Right? That's that two-edged sword. So with that, call out Yahweh by Shimei Rashai. Barakatah Yahweh by Shimei Rashai. Shalom to elect. Call me Yashallah.